<laughs> All right, guys. Um, so let's get started with today's class. Um, I am going to take a look at this piece right here and talk about what is it that's stopping it from being like legitness, right? So what's stopping it from going over to advanced? The rendering is there, the detail is there, but what is missing that makes it look a little noobish? Um, but before I do, I want to start with some announcements. Um, isterac.com is where it's at. So go to isterac.com and click on the Reddit icon here. It will take you to my Reddit and then you'll see, not now, uh, you'll see uh, that um, you know, you can submit posts, post images, 14 day challenges, illustrations, studies, whatever. Um, you can post anything that you are working on right now except fan art. Um, that is like just solid anime tracing or furries. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't allow any furries in here. I'm sorry. There's a limit. Not that you guys are like these ugly, taboo creatures of darkness that nobody wants to, but because you guys draw the most, you just, you guys are just a little difficult to, <laughs> to embed into an educational channel because you, you let them in and they're all innocent looking and they all look like Disney sketches and you're like, fine, okay, at least try to paint realistically. And then all of a sudden just some weird animal penis just shows up out of nowhere in one of those and I'm just like, and then it just, it just things go south fast. Um, so, you know, it's even worse when you guys censor it because then it's just even dirtier for some reason. <laughs> so no furries at all in the channel, but anything, everything else is accepted except anime. Um, but uh, even if it's realistic anime though, that's allowed. Um, but, uh, but yeah, none of that uh, niche stuff, just everything else apart from that. Um, um, and then that was a weird tangent. And then, uh, Patreon. So if you guys are enjoying my channel, if you guys want to give back, if you're wondering how do I support Istabrak, how do I keep this channel going? I learned so much from her. There's, um, you know, there's so much that I'm benefiting from this channel. You can always join as a single dollar patron. It means the world. I know it's a very little amount, uh, but I'm trying to get everybody on board. Um, and the campaign kind of went down after COVID, during COVID. So I stopped really campaigning for it. I lost a lot of time. Uh, but I'm back on it and I'm trying to get everybody on board. Um, anybody who lingers on my channel for, you know, longer than a month um, or, you know, has learned a lot or watches critique hours almost daily. Um, anybody who's like, you know, interested in giving back the way they receive from this channel. Um, it's not that I'm asking for a little bit because of uh, any other reason really other than it's a little bit that together ends up being a lot. Um, so it's really about the togetherness and the rainbow of friendship. Um, so that's why I'm not asking for too much, just because it is a very difficult time in everyone's lives, and it'd be very insensitive and kind of stupid of me to ask for, like, huge pledges, um, buy my merch or anything like that. It's just a small amount that together goes towards a good cause, which is this entire channel, just keeping things alive, keeping hours free, uh, for me so that I'm not always filling things up with my, with my job, um, and just keeping critique hour as a free slot every Tuesday and Thursday indefinitely for the rest of my life as long as I live. Um, and that's it. That's it for announcements. Portrait Studio is still on sale. I most likely will not use it today, um, but, uh, but you've seen it used in other videos if you're wondering what it is. It's a, a software development. Um, uh, so reference development software available on my store. There's a lot of stuff about it everywhere you look. All right. So this piece, what's happening here? What is happening? Um, exactly what is it that's making this piece not read the way we need it to? So the first and most important thing is that the canvas is very long. So let's clean that up. Let's fix it. And there's two things, two alternatives you have. You have two options. This is a little small today. You have two options for making this work. Right. So the first option is just working with what you have and um, respecting the light environment you picked, which is dark room, slight light coming in from the top. How do we make this look more realistic? 
So first and foremost, we really needed the space on either side of the canvas because that was looking a little narrow. It was like somebody like looking at her through a door. And if that was the case, if somebody was looking at her through a door, it's a very simple effect. Um, and you just, uh, you just do that and then you blur it for the foreground, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And that's how you make a character look like they're being peered at through a door. Um, but that's not what we're doing. And that's the only way really to get away with a narrow canvas. We still need that space, that establishing space, that breathing room on our side. So again, the first option is, I'm gonna have two options I'll show you. The first one is just doing what you did, sticking to it. Because lately I've just been kind of in a battle with myself to show you how you guys could have done your illustrations while keeping your choices intact. So basically I just, I just wanna show off that fundamentals do a lot um, even if we kept the creativity of the student intact, the fundamentals can help even bad design decisions. So this is technically, technically what your canvas should be looking like in a room that is so dim with light like that, right? Um, and there should be even more ambient occlusion everywhere. There's, it's just like one light. There's not a lot of bounce light coming through. Um, so I'm sorry I'm not looking at the chat. I know you guys are going at it right now. All right, so we're getting rid of a lot of that bounce light you have everywhere and just kind of setting up the scene as you portrayed it. Um, all right, so I should have, I think I did. All right, and um, yeah, I'm just, respecting the decisions you make. And I'll show you why they're bad, because you know I'm about to say that they're bad decisions. All right, so a little bit more ambient occlusion over here. Basically the projection of the light in pocketed areas, anywhere where the light can't reach. All right, so that's just sticking to what it is you did. It's already ways ahead of where you were. And um, it makes a little bit of sense. Maybe if you wanted to keep it, um, which I don't recommend, or just bring in some kind of secondary light source nearby, like a fire or, or some kind of second light here nearby or a candle or something. But let's take it to the next level. Let us not stick to this boring setup. Let's be a little bit more high quality production, you know, production quality and make better choices. What I want to do is put the light behind her, silhouette her, and drown the light above her from above so that we really get that mystery. In order to do that, I'm going to have to lasso a little bit. Maybe a lot of it. So I'll be here a while. Um... Basically what I'm doing is I'm removing her from the background so that I could silhouette her a little bit in the foreground to help push that story forward. The lighting is the story. That's just what I'm always trying to tell you guys. So write that back to me. The lighting is the story, All right? So can you, anybody tell me what that means? Can anyone try to reiterate that? What does it mean when I say the lighting, lighting is the story? All right, so I'm just cleaning up, clean, clean, clean. Um, I don't know why you've made her breasts like this perfect slanted shape. You kind of lost a lot of that. But we'll see. So I'm separating foreground from background. I'm kind of going to just give her like a little seat situation here. Maybe she's sitting on some pillows or something. You know, she's like on some kind of a seat. And maybe a rock, because you can't just have her floating. If she's floating, it's a completely other scenario. 
So let's just let's just stick to this. So cut, paste, bring that into the background. All right. I'm gonna shrink her in the scene and center her. This is like a um, a shot that is an establishing character. Um, so like a, it's, it's like the first shot we see of Medusa in her cave. Do you know what I mean? It's an establishing shot that shows a little bit of her surrounding and a little bit of her, uh, or a lot of her, but really it's just more about the shared surrounding that sets up the mood of the, of the, of the dialogue we're about to hear or the story we're about to be a part of. So it's not... Um, It's not just like a pinup shot. There's there's environment and there's there's an illustrated environment nearby. So what is it? Light creates mood and the mood of an artwork is informed by the narrative. Therefore, the narrative depends on the lighting to be conveyed beautifully put. Perhaps lighting reveals, emphasizes a selection of surroundings that are important for the story. Very nice. The lighting informs the viewer about the environment. Imagine knowing how to use lasso tool effectively. <laughs> um, you paint light, so by exposing parts of the picture with light, it tells a story. Exactly. Um, uh, lighting shows the main character. Um, yes, uh, so delivery, mood, setting everything up. So when we have a character who is this mysterious hooded seer who also seems to be an entertainer in some kind of really scary club where bad guys go, um, and she's kind of sad, but she's got her magical mirror that kind of helps her see what's coming, and that magical mirror is her is her power um, at the same time, but also maybe her curse. I don't know. But this, but the whole situation here is that um, we're seeing too much of her, and we're we're kind of in the previous setup. It's just a really really boring shot of a dark scene. Maybe the character is solemn. Maybe there. It's just it requires too much writing and explanation. You want an illustrating that an illustration that requires no more writing and explanation. You want to t you don't want a word attached or a little description or a paragraph. You don't want to need one once you've painted a good illustration. A good illustration doesn't need a write up. Write that back to me. Write that up back to me. <laughs> um, uh, I'm interested. What's your thoughts on the copy? It's right to maybe text her text who what's your thoughts on the copying um what what so now she's not watching her phone during class um so what is it is it supposed to be some other drawing it's it's i, I read that earlier that it's supposed to be somebody else it's, it's 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 used it's copied by something is that right i don't care i don't care if it is i'm still critiquing the piece whoever they copied is getting critiqued too <laughs> Everybody's on the top and block today. Okay, um, so let's lighten the background up a little bit. Okay, um, it's plagiarized. Is it like super plagiarized? Like it's just that the person literally said this is my piece or they just did a, a I, I don't care. <laughs> I, I don't care. Um, the original was the figure laying on probably why this new one is so stiff and awkward sitting up. Oh, I, I don't give a shit. I don't care. That's not my problem. I'm critiquing the everybody, everybody who got plagiarized and who didn't. Is, they're all getting screwed today. Um, so what I want to do is put some light behind her and basically recreate that room but silhouette her a little bit. So this, this is all going to look very different at the end. Um, so uh, try to focus, please, to glass. Thank you. Um, and I'm just gonna lay down some of that light and I'm gonna pick kind of like a daylight, kind of like a pale light and, um, something like that. And yes, those are my brushes from years past. And I use a very simple daylight color behind her. Look at what just happened. Mm. Mm. All right, so what's happening is that we are now throwing her into the background. Her silhouette, which is very feminine, is now getting a chance to do something. And a small little light, a small little spotlight changed everything. 
So get this, you don't have to stop there. You can darken the foreground piece quite a bit. Just so that, so I'll bring back what I deleted so that we could have a more uh, curated uh, access to the light. That's a little bit more toward one, emphasizing that mood and narrative and plot and that whole storytelling business and two, just make it look more realistic. It's, it, it helps both. Um, so we got the darkened bit. So now her entire eye area is hooded. We can let in some of that light. Maybe I should use a um, soft brush. Um, I'll block that in there. So I'm just using it as a quick opportunity to block so that we can just get a, 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 a touch, a smidgen more realism where we can. And um, so this mood has now shaded her eyes, created a more mysterious figure, emphasized her feminine figure, which I will correct in a little bit, and um, just changed the whole scene. And it's, it's actually, no, 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 no. It's about, no, 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 I want to keep the cast shadow of the head here, but reveal the breast since it's a pinup. I feel like the light on the upper arm, and I have to bring in that green bluish light, this beautiful daylight color here. And it's not like it's a daylight color, it's just a very good color for create for an atmosphere that's mostly warm indoors because you have that green versus red impact. The top of her hood gets a little bit of that light. Some of it is kind of sneaking on. All right, see how washed out it was? But, ooh, no, they're both gone. See how washed out it was before? And then bring that down. Maybe re-enlarge it now. Okay. And then what I'm going to do really quickly is just adjust her silhouette. So I'm going to take some creative liberty here and, um, seriously, do I know how to draw a body? Um, oops. All right, so we get to see some of that and then just correct this strange shape to the breasts over here. Just try to show that they actually have volume and they stick out. Okay. And then just clean up this horrifying lasso. So ASMR. <laughs> uh, okay. And then, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna <laughs> joking. I am not going to give the simps what they want. I'm not gonna whisper on Katika. Alright, and then um I'm just gonna darken a little bit more just to emphasize that silhouette right over here and just kind of show where maybe her cast shadow is falling on the fabric yeah that does make sense that makes a lot of sense and then just the cast shadow of her thighs on the on the thing image there a little bit at the top And then what I'm going to do really quickly is just enhance the contrast of the background so that we get that dark room feeling, but not too much. And then what we can do is we can play games. What we can do is we could 
kind of overlap the um, the light directly over her head with that green daylight outside kind of just to talk about you know the difference between the magical element of her and the daylight element of the background and what I want to do is do a tricky little number here with the mirror I want to throw in the glare of the mirror that magic like that that metallic glare but I'm really tempted to just darken the whole arm just because it's not in the drowning light that we get a little bit more. And because I did that, I'm going to just give the mirror a better, because when you silhouette something, you reveal all its weaknesses um, as a drawing. A silhouette reveals the weaknesses of a design. Write that back to me. So when we silhouetted it, we can see that it didn't read as a mirror. It just read as like an ice cream cone or a drumstick or something. Um, so this is a pretty tiny little mirror. So I'm going to enlarge the mirror. And that's going to... Um, it looks bad just because the shape of this lasso is bad. But... Let me see if I can just really quickly clean it up. Maybe give it a more unique shape, like a mirror. It's a little bit more designy. Maybe give it those little mirror designs. as they do. Just something to give it a bit more detail. Okay, just bear with me. Um, Don't want it to attract too much attention, but it is part of the narrative, so it shouldn't be too bad. All right, so that's a little bit more detailed than before. And then we're gonna just clean up this background real quick, because it's a little patchy. Um, a, re a silhouette reveals how shit I am. Oh my god, I cannot see the drumstick. <laughs> um, so. Alright. And then, what we're going to do is we're going to do the, the magical thing, which is bring in light that kind of hovers over the character and it's going to be done as the golden magical light or just the light of the scene either or work really you could just switch it but using the green of this light source which is reading as daylight it's really not reading as green in the image it's just canceling the reds back into gray and that's why i use that green that's why i picked that but what this will do is it'll just give us even more of that mystery. Using some of it on the face. It's kind of like a light above and, in, and behind her. And a little bit on the mirror, on the mirror's edge. Isn't that a game, mirror's edge? Or am I imagining something else? A little bit of rim light here. Some more of that light just hovering over. Yeah, it is. Mirror's Edge is in data game. Yes. Good. Good. <laughs> information now. A little bit of green there. 
And then, finally, so you can see before we added the green and the after, kind of unified the foreground and the background. Um, what we're going to do is just drop some stuff down into a closer, like a black, than we did before. Um, so now you have two versions of uh, the story. So why are you not? Oh, slide up. Okay. We have the first one, which is just doing what you did which is just one light source, a really close background, no space behind her. She's like up against the wallpaper, not many cast shadows, things are equally visible all around. Or after you have a little bit more dramatization. The light is behind her and now you have space on either side of the canvas. So what you could do with that space is throw in some establishing shots, uh, establishing, um, sorry, uh, props that help create a better Scene. So I'm going to put a table on the table. I'm going to put a vase. Maybe she is a slave, but you know, she's a favored one. A couple of little powder holders. Um, um, the decoration. Some kind here. Uh, flower. It's withered. A withered flower, because she's a slave, you know, the leaf kind of falling down. All right, some other items here. Maybe there's a curtain somewhere here, and on the curtain there's like a little draw, because she's actually, you know, a concubine, or maybe she's forced to sleep with gross people. I don't know, you know, what they do to women. They just never stop doing it. Another table nearby. <laughs> it's great storytelling. Um, and um, uh, what else do you put in a room <laughs> apart from tables? Um, more pillows on the ground because, you know, sometimes people need to be on the ground. Uh, what else do you put in a room of a seer, concubine? Maybe a oh, crystal ball. Little holder of a crystal ball. A vase, a vial or two, maybe poisons. So she kill herself. She hates her life. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just the stories. It's just what I know about stories and about seers of the king and concubines that are forced to live. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're smelling salts. All right. I'm sorry. I don't mean to make light of suicide. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm being such a dumbass. All right. So I fill all that in. And then I do the magic of blur, gauge and blur. And we just, okay, so I don't like that big curtain at the back. I just killed everything. But the stuff in the foreground is definitely good. So filter, uh, blur, gauge and blur. And I'm just gonna throw it into like a bigger blur and just bring it into the foreground a little bit more. So you could, if you needed to, detail this stuff a little bit more. I'm actually just going to throw it a little bit closer in the foreground because it wouldn't really be that that blurred in the background. And you could just throw some ambient light using the background color wash here. You could just throw some ambient light in there. Um, just like that. Why aren't you painting? Why? You select. Is it because I'm just too low? Oh yeah, I'm too low. Um, so just a little bit of diffuse here, just on the side of the table. Things are still blurred, so. All right, so we're throwing some stuff in the foreground. This crystal ball could be see-through, so it might have a bit of the light come through it. I'm just making stuff up, so obviously you guys will do better to make better decisions. The surface of the table will have some of that ambient light, but we will still get like cast shadows and stuff. Things are blurred just because they're in the in the foreground or background or something. Um 
terrible, terrible stuff I'm adding here. I, I, it's just really bad, but I hope it's it's getting the point across. I do want some kind of curtain up here, some kind of whatever. Um, maybe it's just like a veil of some kind. So maybe a, a light veil of some like a very nice pattern or something like that. Um, how shall I do this? How shall I do it? Alright, so I'm going to throw the first veil layer, lower that down in opacity, and then throw the second veil layer, and that's gonna just overlap the first one, and then a, a third one just to kind of make things interesting. Um, and I'm going to merge all of that and lock it. And then just make sure I bring in that ambient blue light to go through the fabric since anything see-through gets the room's light. And then filter, blur, motion blur. So now that we have all that room everywhere, we can do stuff like this. We can enjoy stuff like this because we have the, the room to add it in there. Um, I'm really, I don't know if I want it to be light or anything like that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So then we have another light we have to bring in, which is the main light. So I'm going to use that spotlight brush I had before. The main light of um, that, that, that strong light, that green light right here, but it's going to be, it's going to go in front of her. And that's what's going to make it feel like it's a dark, dusty kind of tent setup. And that's, that's really what's going to make it pop. So see that? So there is some light in front of her face. And that light in front of her face, in order for it to really, really make an impact, we have to push her face further into even more darkness. So that's what's going to make the lips take center stage for the detail of the character. And that means you're going to have to render the lips out. So look at what happens when we turn it on. And then we have to do that everywhere where there's any major light. So go back to that blue green and kind of just throw some on her thigh. Yeah, it's literally just a ray of light you just toss over. Oops. And it just sits on top of the objects it's falling on. So I don't want to I don't want to show a trace like a track of it. I just want to show where it's falling over these objects that are just inside the spotlight. Look at that. You cannot be afraid of doing stuff like this because that's really what's going to make it make an impact. So the light behind her completed the silhouette, the light on top of her completed the showcase, this, this spotlight, and then now we can reframe all of those areas in the tent here that are just foreground. But we still need that space, even if we're not using it with any extreme light or anything like that, we still need that space here. Other interesting stuff you could do is just making this fabric kind of see through, you know, just bringing in some texture variety, some elements to the texture that that look a little more interesting, um, maybe making this section see through. Just showing the layers in the fabric might help. If it's a heavier fabric, then just keep it as it is, but I feel like we're missing out. No, let me just leave it alone. Um, I'm just trying to fix this. And I don't think I added any adjustment layers into the lasso so I can adjust the lasso. <clears throat> so filter, liquify. So now I'm just going to fix the hood because it's just all over the place. It looks like it drapes here, but it's also a perkier, more stiff fabric here. So I'm just going to make it make sense all around. Just give it like a symmetrical silhouette. Um, give it some some kind of interesting peak there. 
make the fold make sense because you guys really have no idea what to do when something folds because it's just too much three dimension it's too much z-axis and you guys don't do enough form studies so you just freak out when it gets to points where you the fold is just starting to disappear you guys like when you when you don't have form study knowledge you you don't have the maturity to trust the fact that you should just make some stuff disappear because it literally rotates out of view and you guys just force stuff to stay visible like the far side of the eye of the three-quarter view or the far side of the of the hood it should just not be visible because it folded out of the way damn that's the right just breathe <laughs> Um, other cool things you could do is just like keep adding those cool peaks here just to add some stylization. Again, I don't give a rat's ass about what this art was or who it was copied from. I don't care. I'm just taking it at face value. And, um, I'm just going to push the breasts out a little bit because they look a little flat and kind of not real. And you should try to make them look a little more realistic. The chains are kind of in the way at the moment. And I'm just going to push the, the, the that perky kind of um, pin-up pose out. And then I'm not sure what's happening to her legs. Is she just like, is she just all legs? You need to work on that. Um, find a way to stitch some anatomy in there. Find what happens to the ankles. Look up a reference. You have no excuse. Look up a reference that explains what's happening with the legs. Bottom part of the chest is going to get tucked in. And I, for some reason, took a big freaking chunk of her torso right out. I have no idea how that happened, so let me just fix that. <clears throat> Any questions? Fold studies, yes. Um, you detail what you want the viewer to focus on. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to finish off a little bit more of, uh, is this the framing I did? Yeah, so finish off a little bit more. So one thing we could do is just show how the tent is canopy. So, oop, the heck was that? So you could break off the light so it's just not leaving the canvas. Man, that fabric I added is just non-existent at this point. Um, you could if you wanted to. Uh, there's no rule against that. And it's a very dark scene. So I would suggest at least um, trying to relieve some of the foreground objects in some light. So right behind her, I'm just going to let the light kind of bounce back up from the ground, revealing some objects here. And, um, and I'm just going to fix what's happening with her legs. I'm not going to do that. Too much detail, but just enough. <clears throat> and uh, it just, again, it just seems like it has very little volume. So I'm going to try to make the hood open up a little bit more, even if it's just lopped to the side. It just feels more realistic when it's kind of open a little bit. <clears throat> and then. I'm just going to clean that up and then get dodge tool and pick where I want most of that sheen to go, where, where we're getting most of that light on her character. So just those really important points. And then the, the mirror is going to have some glare come out of it. If it's a magical mirror, even better. If it's magical, even better. You can just straight up get some blue glow coming out of that thing. You can do whatever you want. You know, you could just, you, you have a chance now because things are darker, so you could really show what's happening. And if you have that, then, uh, then you could probably mess around a little bit with how that light is on her. Again, it's just about what's possible um, for your storyline. But as you can see, I can't do critique hour until I take like creative, um, make creative choices. So if I am going to take advantage of the mirror being a little magical, I'm just gonna limit the access of that spotlight just to be a little bit more in favor of a secondary light coming in, if you wanted to do that. You also don't have to make it a magical mirror. It could just be basic glare 
coming back through the mirror. Um, and it could just be directed you know, in one way, just coming right off of the mirror. Just to show this mirror is just throwing off some light. And then her eyes are gone. So obviously they have to have some magic in them. So, um, so this is where you can have a bit of fun by introducing some color. And then just for the sake of just going ham, lately I've just been wanting to just do whatever I can to a piece. I'm going to make her eyes glow a little bit. I'm going to add a golden glow just to complete the palette, but I am going to render out her lips just so you could see how when the eyes are missing in an illustration, what takes center stage after that is the is the uh, the mouth. All right. All right, and so for the mouth, I'll turn off all the layers. and just start rendering so really quickly what's the point of it of uh, what's, what's the whole thing behind mouths is they're cylinders they are two cylinders and here now that the mouth is going to be big enough we can really introduce some expression so it's two cylinders one on top of the other so that means we're going to have a value stretching across the lower lip of light and a little bit of the upper and a value underneath just like that. And then we're gonna have the light of the chin, and then we're gonna have the two dark spots. <clears throat> All right, and then we're gonna have that three quarter view overlap of the tulips. I'm literally just drawing that overlap and zooming out. And then I'm going to just blend out, making sure that outer region makes sense. And you could, if you wanted to, add a color. I recommend you do just to break the palette up a little bit around the skin and then the upper lip can get a bit more shadow than the lower lip. Cupid's bow gets a little bit of light as well. So whoever you copied, you copied their mistakes too. Write that back to me. You copy the mistakes of the master study. If it was even a master who did it. So make sure you pick your master study as well, boys and girls. Right, and I'm just completing the contrast there. And it really doesn't make sense that there's light on her face, but we're breaking some rules because they look right while breaking them. Um, no, I think the original is infinitely better than this copy. Um, damn, he got to roast him so hard. <laughs> just, he just ended their whole career. <laughs> That's so mean. The artist is listening and they're just so sad now. I'm so sorry. That wasn't me who said that. That was a pretty cruel viewer. <laughs> they just didn't copy it right. All right, I need to see this original piece. All right, where is it? Okay, like critique the ass too. All right, so you see how the mouth looks a lot better now. Um, looks a lot more visible, and I strengthened the overlap of the um of the face on the hood so it's a much stronger it's a much stronger um, edge yeah so so is the artist here today Um, it's Marno, I think, YouTube, watch. Why, why is there a YouTube video? I'm not watching any videos right now. Right, 
So I'm just making the chin feel a little bit more clean. And um, we really do need it, you know, we did need that uh, on the mouth, just a bit more detail. And then the nostril, which is defying some gravity here. All right, so we turned on the glare, uh, we turned on the foreground objects that are blurred, we turned on the pathetic <laughs> fabric I added at the top for some stupid ass reason, and then we turned on the, um, the thingamabob. Actually, on second thought, I'm not a big fan of any of that eye stuff I did, so I'm just going to get rid of it, because you're going to see it's just going to look great great with her eyes covered up wow that looks phenomenal because now that we added the um the mouth detail we really don't need the cheesy eyes all right no more queso okie dokie and you could if you had to if you wanted to um you could enlarge her a little bit if you feel like she's a little too small on the canvas I, I thought, yeah, yeah, maybe she was a little small. And what you could do to make things a little bit more fun is displace her to the side, add some things in the front. Um, there's a lot you could do to make this canvas read a little bit better. And I, 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 uh, I do need a much stronger, just um, that light here. So it's the brack. You added light coming in from above, but you're also adding a canopy of shadow. Why? Um, because it's still going, there, the light is still there, but in the foreground, there is no light. So there's this like canopy, literally, of a foreground light where we are not under the silhouette. I mean, we are not under the spotlight. So we're in the foreground looking at her. We have blanketing tent over our heads. She doesn't. Um, so we give her light drowning her on top of her, but over us in the foreground where we are, because we are in the canvas, by the way, if you don't know that, um, we, we add shadow. And I just want, because I moved her, I just have to add a touch more light behind her to complete the silhouette. And um, I want to... Limit the amount of light going in between the two thighs just because it does not look uh, accurate. Okay, so that's how you do illustrations. That's how you illustrate. You think about the lighting and how it promotes the story. And then from there you, um, you, you make decisions based off what's the best lighting I could do for this storyline here. And then out of that, uh, you start making decisions for where you're placing the character underneath whatever this lighting ends up being. And then you, by then, hopefully know what a silhouette is and how to use it, and how to use it in different degrees and varying degrees. And um, so I do have to blur some of her parts, and I'm not sure how to do that, because now that I moved her, other shit's revealed now. <laughs> Almost done, and then I'll show you the before and after. <clears throat> what? What's going on? Is it too small? Is the brush too small? Okay. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure what it is. I'm picking up. Picking up just the bad, terrible lasso job I did. Right, but it's crazy when you see all the parts coming together. It's actually really nice. Um, oh, right. And then I was going to blur parts of her. So filter, blur, gauge, and blur. And I'm just blurring for the... No, oh, no, it doesn't work like that. I'm just blurring for the bottom. So I'm going to unblur her. Actually, look, she looks good blurred, but let's just unblur her and everything up here. And then on the lower layer, delete everything. Oops. So that we have a blur on the bottom and a clear layer on the top. That way we're not confused. 
And, um, and I'm just going to clean up some areas that do need a blur. Random lines here and there that are hanging out. And, I mean, we could use more stuff in this scene. We could use some objects here and there, but, uh, but again, I have to close up shop soon, so. I'm just going to complete some of the silhouette of her hat or hood or whatever. And um, over here. Continue blurring. You could have some of this fabric bounce back and bring out some of her dress, but that's an inconsequential detail. Okay, so let's flatten the piece. You saw the before before. Um, let's look at the complete image. There are different color temperatures you could use for the background color. There are different the spotlight color, you could have made it a golden color. The only reason I picked a different color is to bring in some color variation because there's like almost none. It was almost um, uh, uh, monochromatic. So before, see how plain it was and, um, and how it just was not working. And uh, so yeah, before, after. So now you have space on either side. It's not just like a narrow scene before. I should have shown the other alternative where we keep your light environment, but whatever. And then you see how realistic it looks when we bring in that green light, when we cover the eyes up. It just feels more like a complete scene. Before, it's way too narrow. There's no media that needs anything this narrow other than a phone background. <clears throat> After. Any questions? Thank you guys, thank you. Completely different piece. Um, I wish I could zoom into just the drawing in your video since I'm watching on my phone at work. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. How long did you take this edit? Um, if I've been streaming for an hour, but I made a lot of bad jokes in between and a bit of intro talking. So less than an hour. I'm just curious to know what you think about copying concepts. You can copy anything because the person you copied also copied somebody. As long as you make it unique and as long as you're not doing a master study that you're saying is your own, you can draw any lady. A lady named Carol can come in here, hold a mirror, sit here, change the lighting environment a little bit or literally copy the lighting environment, wear a similar costume, and it would still be her own painting if she brought in something or her own pose or her own photo if she brought in something. This is not holding a, a, a woman holding a mirror in an illustration is not copyrighted. What is copyrighted is if you're literally copying the intellectual property, like you are drawing the same character, the same clothing, clothing the same costume, and saying it's your own. If it's inspired, that's very different because that's a very gray area there. I am inspired by this character. I am inspired. I'm going to write my own character inspired by. Uh, it's like it's not it's like borrowing, but you also accredit because you are literally inspired by this character. But you feel you could adjust the character a little bit to fit more within your plot line. There's nothing wrong with that. You can be inspired by existing stories as long as you make them your own in some way or another. And you should be. You shouldn't be just doing fan art that you say isn't fan art. Like, I don't understand this scenario. Is it fan art that they're saying is not? Like, it's their own? Um, I really don't care. As long as they tried to do something, as long as they were painting, as long as they were being malicious or dishonest or, or plagiarizing to make money, it's not a horrible... Keep these artists drawing. Don't put up rules. Oh, you can't use reference. Oh, everything has to be from your imagination. Oh, you can't be too inspired by someone's illustration. Oh, wow, you copied Ash from League of Legends because you added a hood. Like, it. oh, no, there's a mirror. You copied mirrors. I don't, I don't know which character holds a mirror. Um, oh, no, it's a character whose eyes are invisible. You know, oh, you, you copied literally every seer character ever written. 
Like there's there's no nothing belongs to anybody other than the specifics and the story and the, and the character name, and and that's it really. That's why character name nomenclature or copying note for note a song is a suable stuff, but you can have parodies, published movies with parodies, uh, like of, as parodies, an entire movie that's a parody of another movie. And you don't get sued because nobody can, because you can say, oh, it's just inspired by this character. We're just like, think of a scary movie. Like, how many movies have they ripped off if you really think about it? And that's the entire concept of scary movie. But they made like billions of dollars off those movies or millions um, while copying 50 other movies. It's just because they're, they're just imitating or mocking or parodying. Um, it's a very similar gray, gray area as being inspired by or working from or, 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 um, or, or borrowing from different existing concepts. Just don't copy the names, titles, costumes, um, you know, uh, pixel for pixel and you're, you're golden. Um, it's okay to be inspired by existing IP. It does not mean you're a thief. It means you appreciate you're an artist who's drawing, who isn't maybe that great with their own narratives yet that they just need a little bit of a boost. That's fine. All right. Um, base, because you made this so much better and unique, right? Thought so, but they should mention this in their post, right? Oh yeah, if they're gonna copy a master study, they should mention it in the post. Um, they said it was original. Okay, that's different. Make sure you get on them for making, make that amendment. Thanks for the content, Mr. Rec. You're very welcome, Adrian. Uh, like Spaceballs, exactly. Whereas Spaceballs was a little too close because, um, it was, uh, the, the Spaceballs was only allowed and and what's his name didn't sue as long as they didn't have merchandise as long as they didn't try to create merchandise out of Spaceballs which why would they but I, I, I mean I would love a little you know a little figurine with an oversized Vader head but I can see why because the Spaceballs um, figure merchandise would have competed with the Star Wars merchandise which is what Star Wars is all about they literally design characters to be merchandisable they design the toy and then they design the character um so yeah <clears throat> what's your thoughts on the original i don't know what the original is i haven't seen it uh, i don't care you know how many fucking illustrations i see in a day i don't give a shit about illustrations anymore i just share some cool stuff on ig and that's <laughs> you know how many fucking concepts i see in a day how many environments i see in a day nothing there's no story that's original to me anymore. I will mention if something's original and cool, but <laughs> but I'm so desensitized. Everything everything is great. Kitchen halwat. Everything is great. Um, but anyway, uh, we have uh, before, after. So if you learn something today, please go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon here to join us on Reddit, my subreddit. Um, and uh, this is where I will be posting up hopefully this weekend if I could find a minute to breathe um, I will sit down and write up a really cool Halloween uh, community challenge concept it'll be working off the daily sketch challenges I send out on IG by the way follow me on Instagram I'm like really cool and I post a lot of memes <laughs> and I post daily sketch challenges there for those who are kind of bored and feel like they need a little push I find a reference and share it and I feel like if the references I pick are really artist friendly and very fun I don't pick anything too complex or anything but something very inspiring something very fun so follow me on Instagram it's just Instabrack it's not Instabrack I'm sorry I didn't do it like that but it's just Instabrack on Instagram and um so yeah Halloween challenge is upcoming it'll be posted on the Reddit um and if you learn something today and you want to give back please support me on Patreon I really appreciate it even if you just don't even if you just join as a dollar patron that's twelve dollars a year or less um uh because Patreon takes like twenty percent uh, so if you want to join me um, and support me on Patreon, you can. And um, and that's it. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I will see you guys next week, Tuesday, hopefully if my health allows. And, uh, and that's it. Thanks, guys. And I'll see you guys next class. Bye.